to get a job i want i need to do something about it with the capacity that was given to me by allah but i do not take prayer and supplication out of the equation prayer and supplication more powerful than anything you will do but it is coupled with what you shall do because allah gives you the ability to do it so you have some people saying you know what I want this, but I'm just going to pray about it. That's it. I need the job and I'm going to ask Allah all night, every night. Allah's allowed you to discover the email of perhaps the place where you want to work. Allah's allowed you to discover the name of the person who's at human resources, who's perhaps dishing out the jobs. And Allah expects you to utilize your mind that he gave you your capacity he gave you, you're sitting next to me, you're meeting me today, is not a coincidence. It's not. It was planned by Allah, but didn't you make a little effort given the ability that Allah gave you? There were others after you had perhaps booked, who wanted to book, who couldn't book because it was all sold out. It was. So, may Allah grant us goodness. You have to use that capacity. But does that mean you only use the capacity without dua or you only make dua without using your capacity? A true mu'min, it's a marriage of both. It's a marriage of both. But which is more powerful? The dua. The prayer, the supplication is definitely more powerful. But in order to acknowledge the greatness of Allah, you must acknowledge the ability He's given you. If you can sit and stand today, it's only because Allah gave you the power to do that. That's why when Qarun, the very wealthy person at the time of the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, mentioned in Surah Al-Qasas, if I'm not mistaken, Allah Almighty says that his crime was not that he had wealth. His crime was he allowed the wealth to make him arrogant. And on top of that, he told everyone, this is nothing to do with God Almighty. This is me, my intellect, my brain, my capacity, my physical strength and my sharp brain. I got all this and I made you. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Who gave you that brain? Did you give yourself the brain? Who gave you the capacity? Who gave you the ability? Who allowed you to network and to meet? We think we're intelligent. Hang on, hang on. It's Allah who allowed you to network. Today we have social media through which the bulk of us have gotten to know each other. Am I right? Where did that come from? Did Allah not? You might say, oh, it's a human being. It's these people, those people. This social media belongs to that one and this one and this one invented this and that. Did Allah not give them the capacity in their brains? Where did their brains come from? So go back to the source, the root. It's always Allah. Do not allow yourself to forget Allah. Allah is the first of that entire equation. So Karun's crime was, he says, I was given all of this because of me, myself and I, my knowledge, the knowledge that is within me. Hang on. Allah says, does he not see we've destroyed people before him who had much more than him because he became arrogant. He needs to witness the destruction of those who were similarly arrogant that happened in the past. When Allah destroys, He doesn't just, you slap and you get a slap back on your, on your cheek. That's not how Allah works. Allah gives you a moment. He gives you some time. It differs from person to person, situation to situation, nation to nation. Imagine if every time you did something bad, you had the punishment instantly. Instantly. We wouldn't be able to do any bad. Imagine you're trying to walk away from the masjid and the next thing you just get pulled back. Hey, come back. You would have to fulfill your salah. Imagine time of salah and you want to do something and suddenly you just freeze. What option do you have? Allah says it defeats the purpose. We give you time. We want you to return on your own. One day you have to go back. There's no option. One day you're going to have to fulfill the instruction of Allah. You have no option. One day when you go back to Allah, you will be at his mercy completely. And you know what? The best thing about it is he's the most merciful, the most kind, the most generous. He is above all in terms of forgiveness. 
If you think you're a forgiving person who can forgive others, Allah is a billion times more than that. In fact, we cannot even compare it. So, where does this dua come in? I will call out to Allah. Oh Allah, grant me. When you want something good, you ask Allah. When you want to be protected from bad, you ask Allah. Those are the two main types of dua. Supplication. But there is a third type of dua. Filled with gratitude to Allah, to ask Allah to allow you to continue to receive from His mercy when you are already in goodness. That's probably one of the most important to us. Because naturally, if I desperately want something good, say for example, I want to pass my exams, what happens? Human beings, I'm a human being. I will get up for prayer. I will read a little bit of Quran. I will remember Allah a bit more in terms of dhikr. I will give a little charity, do a bit of good. Why? Because I need a good rapport with Allah, good relationship with Allah. And I'm going to say, oh Allah, help me to pass my exams. Help me to pass my exams. Help me to pass my exams. Grant me goodness. Let the questions in the examination be exactly what I have studied. Powerful dua. You want goodness. You called out to Allah. Okay, that's good enough. Very good. Allah created the need in order for you to call out to Allah. The beauty of calling out to Allah for something that He may never give you is that you have other things that you will receive as a reward for that particular dua. You might have failed your exams, but guess what? As a result, you were cured from a disease you didn't know that you actually had. How's that? Well, how were you cured? Because the destiny, here goes. You called out to Allah, acknowledging His greatness, acknowledging He is the owner of what you want. And He knew He's not going to give it to you. As a result, He gave you something else. Subhanallah. Was it not worth it making a dua, even if I didn't get it? So don't come about and say, I've been calling Allah for 20 years in order for me, for example, what can I say? You know, besides marriage, there's hardly anything else people talk about these days. And we still find it difficult to get married, mashallah. Yeah, may Allah bless those who don't have spouses with spouses. And those who do have spouses, don't ask me to make another dua for you because it becomes spice. My brothers, my sisters, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala held back one thing for 20 years that you were asking for. But for those 20 years, He gave you sustenance. He gave you some things that no one else had, but you were too busy only calling for that which you didn't have. So you began to feel Allah is not responding to your dua, but all along He was only giving you the blessings that He was giving you because of this dua that He kept rejecting, knowing that if I gave this to you, it would not be good for you. How many of us have gotten into situations we were praying to get into and when we got into them, we regretted ever having prayed to get into those situations. Human beings goes back to what I said right at the beginning the knowledge of Allah that's Allah he knows so you make a dua for the goodness I gave an example of that say you are unwell you are sick may Allah grant cure to all those who are sick and ill I mean you ask Allah oh Allah cure me from the cancer from whatever else it may be from the blindness from the sickness I have in my whatever organ it may be from this, whatever, oh Allah, and you cry and you, you're hoping you have a procedure tomorrow, for example, and you're busy saying, oh Allah, guide the doctor to be able to diagnose, to be able to effectively eradicate this. Oh Allah, you are the guide, guide his hand. Don't we say that? Mashallah, beautiful dua. Even if it resulted in your death. By the virtue of that dua, Allah may give you paradise. And you might wonder, did I really deserve this? Allah says, well, you desperately sought a certain thing from us, which we didn't give you because we didn't give that to you. We loved the way you asked us and your sincerity and the way you worshipped us by asking us. We will give you paradise in return. Uh -huh, that was okay. 
that was okay. ultimately I still have to go even if it's 10 years from now you find a guy who's 75 80 oh Allah grant me a good life I can't go now I really can't go now oh Allah I need to see my grandchildren get married but you know what 40 years back he was saying oh Allah I need to see my children get married and if Allah gave him life to 120 oh Allah I need to see my great great grandchildren get married may Allah grant us ease those children might be making dua we need to see our grandfather in the grave Astaghfirullah Astaghfirullah Depends People are not so tolerant anymore of their grandparents May Allah make us from among those who appreciate each other It's a blessing